Good evening and welcome to Business Live with me, Israel. Like registrar, coming up, Registrar General settles on September 23 as payment date for investors of 22 liquidated fund management firms. Private pension fund managers lament low awareness of Ghana's pensions regime. There's more as Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark International Pension Awareness Day. Plus, government to inject $5 million into the decentralization of some steel factories. We have all that coming up in a best day, Judy. The Registrar General's Department has settled on September 23 as the proposed date for a payment of investors of the 22 liquidated fund management firms. The Registrar General, Jemaine Mouwari, made this revelation during a virtual meeting with the said investors earlier today. George Raffi has more. According to the Registrar General, Jemaine Mouwari, this is part of the proposed payment structures for the investors and creditors of the 22 fund management firms that she got the court's approval to liquidate. However, per this new arrangement, the payment will only affect 20 firms. The registrar did not further disclose that a fraction of the validated claims will be paid by cash, while the rest will be placed in a mutual fund and drawn down over a period. The registrar did not also disclose that the first batch of cash payment will be carried out from September 23, while withdrawals under the mutual fund will commence from 30th of September 2020. The fund will be managed by GCB Capital, while the cash payment to investors will be managed under a new entity created, that is, the Amalgamated Fund Limited. Further details as captured in her presentation during the virtual meeting showed that persons below 60 years will get a minimum of 70,000 Ghana cities. This should mean that if you had invested 70,000 Ghana cities, then you are likely to get everything in terms of the new cash payment structured under the Tier 1. Pensioners and those who are above 60 years will get all their payment under this new cash payment structure. All faith-based organizations, schools and hospitals will all get their claims under this new arrangement, while financial institutions, credit unions, will get 50% of their fund. According to the Registrar General, they are committed to paying all these claims depending on how the meetings with creditors and investors end. She also added that they are committed to going after all the directors of these liquidated fund management firms. The manager of Continental Blue Investment Ghana Limited, producers of SuperSim Cement, Friedrich Albright, is calling on the Ghana Sellers Authority to check the quality of cement products on the market to ensure customers are not shortchanged. According to him, the cement market is quite competitive and any substandard product sold in the country could affect general sales. He spoke with Joy Business after the company made a donation of 800 cement bags to the Detective Training Academy of the Ghana Police Service at the Tesano Police Training School. Uh, Ghana is a very competitive market with a lot of uh, players. Uh, we are trying to, we are betting on, on quality cement to try and make a difference. Uh, we are doing, we are trying our best, we are doing not too bad, uh, but it's a very competitive market. Everything in terms of pricing, in terms of numbers of players, in terms of quantities uh, of players, production capacities. Currently Ghana is in excess of production. Uh, in excess of production, yes, more by more than 40 percent. So it's it's not an easy market. The capacity utilization at the moment is around 65 to 70 percent uh, of the plants that are actually. So we have to to be present and to make a difference. And CBI has chosen to do with SuperSEM a quality difference. Uh, so we are trying to promote best quality and to train also, training and better usage. Mary Ghanian hold a view that the cost of cement in Ghana is quite expensive. Do you share that sentiment? If you look compared to the rest of, uh, of West Africa, Ghana is one of the lowest. If it's not the lowest, it has always been. Now, it's very, the price of cement is a very important component and uh, it's an important component above us. It's an important component of the construction industry. What, what is actually is uh, cheap cement or too cheap will be to the detriment of quality. And uh, we believe that doing the right thing is what we need to do. So we need a strong intervention from Ghana Standards Authority that we, with whom we are working 
actually to try and uh, and uh, and ensure best practice in the market because some players are not playing with the same cards than the others and uh, that's why we need to make sure that the quality is the right one and people need to be aware that when they are buying cement they need to do the good choice and the difference of few pessoa can uh, give you a bad cement lower quality than a, a good cement the Trade and Industry Minister Alan Chamanting has hinted government's plans to decentralize all seven steel manufacturing factories located at Tema. Being a welcome visit to the new 1D1F steel factory by Ryder Steel Company, Alan Chamanting explained the usefulness of steel companies to Ghana's mineral ore value chain. In a whistle stop at Ryder Steel in Kumase, Trade and Industries Minister Alan Tremantin explained the reasons why government is bent on decentralizing the steel's manufacturing industry in Ghana. We are embarking on um, a major industrial transformation agenda. And all over the world, uh, where you, uh, you see um, significant progress in industrialization, Steel is always a major part of that. Uh, well, you know, we, we have um, um, large deposits of iron ore, and we've identified the iron and steel industry as one of our new strategic anchor industries to diversify our economy. Uh, but before we get to that stage where we can mine our iron ore and, um, and then also add value and get steel. We have currently about seven uh, companies that are producing uh, steel from scrap that is harnessed from, uh, from Ghana and in some cases brought from the uh, West African region. But the reason why we are particularly interested in this company locating um, in this area is because number one, a lot of the scrap that um, is used by our steel industries either come from the Brongafo, Ashanti region, uh, part of the Western North uh, region, and in actual fact from our Sahelian uh, uh, countries. So it only makes sense that um, one, the first steel company uh, that is located in Ashanti region uh, would then benefit, you know, uh, from the strategic location uh, in, in, uh, in, in this part of, of, of the country. When completed, Ryder Steel in Kumasi is expected to employ about 900 to 1,000 workers within the community. We interacted with the general manager, T.P. Patnaik, who explained the entire process in accruing specific loans from the International Financial Currently, Corporation under the World Bank. <laughs> Moving out from the Tema, we have all the steel factories in Tema, as the minister told her. Uh, we are trying to actually move out and come develop other region. This is a region which was not developed at all. Like if you see, the major reason was there was no power earlier. Now the country has excess power and power is available here. We said, let's go and develop this place. Uh, second is the market is, we're looking at North Market and the neighboring countries and uh, inside of Ghana, not only the port of Ghana, that's why we trained. And how has the feedback from government been so far? We have been pretty well, uh, I mean, uh, supported by them. We have been talking to them regularly. They have been uh, very helpful on getting us all the permits, licenses, everything to be done. So, How much does it cost to establish this factory? This whole factory's projected cost is about $24 million, but it might go up a little bit. But as of now, it's $24 million. It's been funded partly 50% by IFC loan of $12 million, and balance has been shareholders funding. Mm. How many jobs are we expecting to be created? We are looking at minimum of 900 to 1,000 people permanently working here and then another 2,000, 3,000 people for uh, employment outside the factory. Okay. What was the production capacity? This factory is rated at 3,000 tons, uh, 300,000 tons per annum. Per annum? Per year, yes, please. Okay, okay. You plan on exporting elsewhere after? We will. We will be exporting to neighboring countries, Burkina, Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, and all those countries around there. Already, Trade Minister Alan Tremantin has been detailing to Joy Business the need for industries to decentralize across the country. We want to decentralize industrial development. Literally all the uh, seven companies, steel companies, are located in Tema. 
you know, within a very uh, small uh, radius. And unless we are able to develop uh, um, you know, other parts of the country, how are we going to improve the economic uh, life of our, 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 our districts and, and our rural communities? So we feel that uh, this, is, this is a very important uh, decision to locate in this part of, of the country. Making his tour across several factories and business resource centers in Kumasi, the trade minister explained the reasons why government continues to inject capital in struggling and surviving factories to ensure the 1D1 Air project is completed. Even as Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark the International Pensions Awareness Day, not many Ghanaians have an appreciation of the importance of the pensions regime in the country. The head of business development at People's Pensions Trust, Eric Edua Painting, spoke earlier on the marketplace on how difficult it is for private pension fund managers to penetrate the market. As a country, we hadn't been really um, gotten it right. Mm. Why it was, uh, I'm, I'm saying it's not easy, is that they keep changing the scheme here and there. So you feel, I mean, we've seen some improvement over the past few years with SNIT and especially the private sector and government regulation as well. But you feel there should be some sense of reliable structure that could be there for a lifetime? Yes. Um, I think the Act 766 is, is, is doing what um, it's supposed to. But uh, maybe the MPRE has to um, look at one or two things. Um, especially when you look at the working class of our country, we have about over 70 over 70 percent of our working class being in the informal sector but when you look at the cost of venturing into the informal sector it's very expensive hmm. so you know over the past few years we have seen tier two tier three you know come inside we've seen the infiltration of you know private pension you know uh, funds you know firms also come in how has competition been like for people like the people's pensions trust um, it, it has been tough, but um, we still have much of the market which has not been uh, touched. And we're looking at um, getting more of the market. South District Assembly has launched a pro-tourism event dubbed Explo at Fajato 2020 to promote and project the district's tourism potentials to the outside world. The four-day event is expected to attract hundreds of th tourists and revelers to the district, which have also over 14 interesting and intriguing tourist sites. Speaking at the launch, the Afajato South District Chief Executive Etonam Flolu expressed optimism the event would help improve the Assembly's revenue mobilization and accelerate socioeconomic development in the district. Walter well, Region Correspondent Fred Kwame Asari has more. The Afajato South District arguably has the highest number of tourist sites in the country. It is home to the highest mountain in West Africa, the Afaja, and various waterfalls. One of the only two monkey sanctuaries in Ghana is located in the district. Records indicate the forest around Tafi Atome serves as habitat to some eight unique troops of monkeys. A journey to the caves is a much desired one, while the snake village, an artificial habitat for numerous serpent species, will take your breath away. Though these sites have the potential to attract foreign exchange, very little revenue has been accrued over the years. This informed an initiative by the District Assembly to launch Explore Afajato 2020 aimed at rebranding and promoting the tourism potentials of the district. Speaking at the launch, the district chief executive, Etonam Fululu, invited private entities to consider investing in the tourism sector of the district. This is where we get to allow people to come in. We need to get investors to come in to understand what we have and then offer what we have so we can benefit significantly. That is the only way out because it clearly shows that, yes, our capacity is strong, but our capacity can be better enhanced if we allow people to come in. So this is equally a call to people to come in. I said it somewhere that if you want to pray to God, the highest mountain is here. You are closer to God. This is even where you should hold up, host all your rallies and pray to God. 
if you want to live long, the waterfalls are the natural water for you to drink. The chief executive officer of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Akwesi Ajiman, underscored the pivotal role tourism plays in the development of a nation. It will continue with belief, and I will urge all of you that tourism is a gold mine that we have never taken seriously. Last year, when we decided to pay attention to our tourism with a year of return, we saw what happened with an increase of almost 200,000 people in a year and massive um, economic activity, not just for the upmarket businesses, but for small businesses and everybody within the value chain. That is what will happen in Nafaja too if we all put our minds to it. The chief executive officer of the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors, Senor Hosi, who lauded the initiative, implored both locals and government to support it. The drive coming to Afajato is in itself so beautiful, and that's why the Volta region is the most beautiful region in Ghana. Driving right from Ho, climbing the mountain, and descending from Vane is a beautiful scenery. There's something they call road to Hana. You go on it in Hawaii, it's a big thing, and it cannot match what you have here. Your mountains are beautiful. One of the things that we should remember, we have a growing youth. People say that great people like going to school. It's true. But after the school, what else do we want? We want jobs. And like DC said, the jobs can only come from us using the things that God has blessed us with. And God has blessed us with a beautiful place. If we, the adults here, cannot use this beautiful gift from God to turn things around for our children and our children's children, we have failed our region. The Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Achibod Lecha, assured of the government's commitment to the success of Explore Afajato 2020. It is worth noting that the Volta region is truly and proudly regarded as the hub of tourism in Ghana. So I just want to assure the people of Afajato South that the government of Nana Rodanko Akufado and the Volta Regional Community Council, we are solidly behind you. And will support you in whatever you are doing. The four-day event, laced with numerous activities, is scheduled between Wednesday 21st October and Sunday 25th October. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Golokwati. Right, and that'll be all for Business Life for today. I'm Israel Lai. Have a good evening.